This is the second in a series developed by TechnoServe's mobile training unit that aims at empowering smallholder maize farmers in Kenya to improve the productivity of their maize farming enterprises. In topic one on land preparation and maize planting, the following principles were shared that it is important to take soil tests from your maize plots so as to determine the appropriate types and quantities of fertilizers to use. Your farmer business organization and other service providers will offer you these linkages. It is important to leave sufficient crop residues from the previous crop in the farm as a way of replenishing soil nutrients and offering cover to the soils. Do not burn crop residues in your farm as this causes serious damage to the environment and your soils. Adopt appropriate practices of land preparation by ensuring minimum disturbance of your soils. Remember that continuous use of disc plow and harrows damages your soils. Select the most appropriate seed varieties suited both for your environment and your needs. Keep your eyes and ears open for new varieties that are better and more suited to your needs and remember to source your seeds from a recognized dealer. Now, in this current video, we shall share best practices that you need to adopt in taking good care of your maize crop from the time it emerges from the ground to the point when it is ready for harvest. These will move your maize farming business from a low to a high profitability enterprise. Factors determining productivity of maize crop. A number of factors determine whether you realize good results. Some of these factors may not be entirely under your control, but by attending trainings and seeking advice, you shall be able to put most of these under your control. The factors that determine how healthy and productive your maize crop is include the variety planted. Early maturing varieties tend to produce fewer leaves and progress through the growth stages faster than late maturing varieties. <laughs> So the amount of yield potential per variety is very crucial because at the end of it, it will determine the profitabilities. We have varieties which have potential even up to 40 to 50 bags of 90 kgs per acre. We also have varieties that um, can give 30 bags, 40 bags, 20. And depending on uh, what you are aiming for, uh, it's up to you to select the variety that fits within your targeted production. Planting seasons and weather patterns. In most parts of North Rift, farmers plant their seeds at the onset of the long rains in March, while those in South Rift and Eastern Kenya plant at the onset of the short rains in October. Farmers plant their seeds at the onset of the long rains in March, while those in South Rift and Eastern Kenya plant at the onset of the short rains in October. Our country is uh, made up of different agroecological zones. We have zones with high rainfall, uh, high te low temperatures, and uh, the rich soils that may qualify for the highland. The highland receives 
almost a thousand millimeters of rain uh, within a period of eight months and the soils are fairly fertile. Therefore, the kind of hybrid that we want to develop must be able to utilize that resource as much as possible. And that's why we have late maturing varieties. They fit that zone. Should you come up with an early material, it may, be, it may need that the farmer harvests during the wet season and therefore lose much of it through rotting. It also depends on whether they want to do two crops in a year or one crop in a year. If a farmer wants to do two crops in a year, he may be forced to do to plant varieties which mature area so that it gives him time to harvest and prepare the land for the next planting season. However, due to the unpredictable weather patterns and over-reliance on rain-fed agriculture, it is better for farmers to adopt certain practices to avert severe losses. These practices include conservation agriculture. Mbinu ambayo tunaeleza wakulima ni mbinu ambayo inaitwa kilimo hifadhi. Ambayo ni mbinu raisi tunahimiza wakulima wawe waikumbatie wa, wa, ili waangalau wapate kupunguza gharama ambayo wanatumia kwa shamba. Wapunguze muda ambao wanakuwa kwa shamba na pia wapate kushiriki kwa mambo mengine ambayo yanajenga nje. Kilimo hifadhi hasa tunazingatia mambo matatu. Jambo la kwanza ni kutosumbua udongo sana. Kwa Kiingereza inaitwa mean mortgage. Jambo la pili ni kuzungusha mimea kwa shamba. Inaitwa crop rotation. Alafu jambo la tatu ni kubakisha yale ma, ma, mabaki ya chakula ambayo umetumia kwa shamba ambayo tunaita residue retention. Provision of required nutrients. Mjanga sija bima nijue nataka mbwalea gani au iko rotuba kiasi gani chini. It is important that you understand the nutrient content of your soil so as to apply the relevant fertilizers to effectively support plant growth through all the stages. Kuna hii mambo ya soil sampling ikifanywa na ionekane inahitaji urea ama CAN tunaweza ku advise mkulima accordingly urea na na CAN ina mwako tu hivyo kwa vile ikiwekwa mwanzo ama wakati inapandwa hiyo urea inaweza pepwa na maji ama inaweza kubadilika hiwe iende hiwe kasi saa hii mambo ya kuweka fertilizer inaweza kawa mara mbili weke ya kwanza baada ya kubalilia ya kwanza na pengine wakati ule mahindi imeanza ku, kufunga fichwa inasaidia inapea nguvu mimea ku, kupata matawi mzuri na ile stoki mzuri alafu iweze kutenge kujitengenezea chakula chake After planting, it is the delight of every farmer to watch his field of maize crop successively progress from one stage to another and eventually reap a good harvest. Nimefanya ukulima kwa miaka mingi lakini naona hii mwaka ndio mind imefanya nzuri. A deteriorating maize crop is a great disappointment to a farmer and a waste of energy and time. Shida mind kukosa mbwa kwa nji sababu mbua ya nji ni kidogo sana hapana nyasha kama utarajia samani naweza kuja nyasha ile mwezi ya tatu na umepanda tayari ile nini mahindi akaua na nini najua kati yote sababu anapanda hiyo mahindi mwezi ya kwasa ashu mwezi ya 12 alafu hiyo mwaka yote ile karibu hiyo mbili hii ni jua tu anaweza kosa hiyo maji ya mbua ni anaweza kosa mbua Naesa kosa kila kitu na wamepanda. Naesa diyo wa. Jua naesa wa yu nini? Yu maidi.
all maize plants follow the same general pattern of growth and development. It is critical to observe these stages of maize growth and take corrective action as required so as to ensure full realization of maximum output. Emerging Stage Once the seed absorbs water, germination commences. Sprouting stage comes about one week after sowing and the plants develop two to four leaves at this stage. The foundation of root development begins at this stage. The depth at which the seed is placed at planting, quality or viability of seed planted, and consistency of the rains after planting will determine effective sprouting of the maize seed. A uniform maize stand. Establishing a uniform stand is the first step in optimizing yield potential. Same variety planted on the same plot and given equal treatment is expected to grow uniformly and at the same rate. Once the green canopy begins to form, be careful to observe how well and uniform the crop is covering the ground. If you notice a growth trend in your field where the growth is not uniform, then there is a problem somewhere. Some of the things that determine a uniform stand are use of the same seed varieties in a given plot, planting at the same time, and recommended seed populations. The spacing is 25 by 25 centimeters which gives, translates to plant population of between 18,000 and 21,000 plants per acre. Under seeding, that is doing below 18, you are under seeding the farm, which will translate into low yields eventually. Rapid vegetative growth stage. The third critical stage occurs when the number of kernel rows per year and the number of potential kernels per row are determined. This stage, also called knee-high, arrives about 35 to 45 days after sowing. This is followed closely by tasseling or flower initiation where the tassels or male flowers appear. Generally, the maize plant would have attained its full height by the end of this stage. Pollination stage. This is a critical stage to convert potential maize cobs to actual developing maize cobs. The success of pollination process is greatly influenced by the weather. At this stage, the maize plant begins to silk which involves the formation of the female flowers or cobs. Drought, stress can desiccate silks and pollen grains which results in barren ears and short ears with barren tips. Grain fill or kernel development stage. This is a final critical growth stage which begins at pollination and ends at the kernel black layer formation. After pollination and fertilization is over, soft dough or milky phase commences. Grains start developing, but they do not become hard. This soft dough stage is noticed by the silks on the top of the cob, which remains partially green at this stage. Covering of the cobs also remains green. At this stage, the following stress factors can individually or in combination significantly inhibit kernel number, size, and weight of harvested kernels. Drought, extreme temperatures, foliar diseases, hail damage, and nutrient deficiency. This is the ultimate stage where a compromise on best practice at an earlier stage comes to light. The maize plant redirects its energies into developing kernels and grains, which therefore sacrifice the health of the stalk, leaves, and roots.
hard dough or maturity stage shows that the leaves get dried, silks get dried completely and become very brittle. Harvesting is done at this stage. Remember, a uniform vigorous maize stand is the first step in optimizing yield potential. Critical reproductive stages are emergence, leaf and root development, pollination, and grain filling. Stress during the critical stages can reduce the rate of photosynthesis, which leads to yield reduction. I see.